to start off by asking you all to take a deep breath and close your eyes for a few minutes. So I want you to imagine a world where 10, 20, or 30 years from now, we produce 50% more food than we do today, where childhood malnutrition is practically non-existent, where we produce nutrient-dense foods rather than highly processed foods with very little nutrients, and climate change is something we no longer deny, but something we're learning to figure out through sustainable agriculture practices. And we didn't get to this future with some costly new silver bullet technology, but with something very simple and simply revolutionary, by investing in women farmers and making sure that they have the same access to resources as men. You can open your eyes now. Thank you for indulging me. So as a woman, it's absurd to me that we make up more than half of the world's population and we make up nearly half of the world's farm labor force, but we are most almost universally ignored as farmers. And for a lot of people, when they think of farmers, they picture men in, in fields or in the cabs of tractors and combines. And that's frankly the kind of agriculture I grew up with in Defiance, Missouri, which is uh, ironically uh, in the county uh, next to Monsanto's headquarters. But, but that's not the kind of agriculture I'm talking about today. I'm talking about women who tend dairy cows in Ghana, uh, women who uh, grow gardens for school canteens in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, women who are growing indigenous vegetables in Kenya's uh, slums, women who are harvesting tea in India and coffee in Ecuador or picking tomatoes in Florida. Women make up 43% of the global agricultural labor force. And in some countries, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, they make up as many as 80% of all farmers. This invisible sisterhood are the world's food producers. And yet these working women are routinely denied access to education, refused by banking and financial institutions, and ignored often by extension agents and research organizations. They are routinely discriminated against just because they are women. But you see, these hardworking women are not victims. They are businesswomen. They are stewards of the land. Many have other professions in addition to farming so that they can put food on the table. They are the caretakers of rich cultural traditions, actively preserving indigenous crops and biodiversity. And all of this occurs in the service of food that people actually eat. And maybe you think that's an obvious thing for me to say, but men, especially in the developing world and, and also here in the United States, tend to focus on cash or commodity crops. While it's women who are producing the vegetables and the fruit and raising the livestock that actually nourish families from day to day. So today, I'm calling on all of us, the eaters of the world, to stand with our farming grandmothers, mothers, sisters, aunts, cousins, and all of the women who work with the earth to produce food to give them the support, recognition, and value they deserve. About five years ago, thank you. About five years ago, I had this incredible opportunity uh, to start traveling to 50 plus countries in Sub-Saharan Africa Asia and Latin America, and I interviewed hundreds and hundreds of farmers. And, and the women I met on the ground tend to work very hard. Uh, they tended to work harder than the male farmers I met with, and they certainly work harder than I do. They cook and they clean. Uh, they take care of children and sick elders. They fetch water and fuel. And they took me in, uh, you know, a short American girl who interrogated them about their lives and followed them around with her little notebook. And I, as a researcher and a writer, began to really grow resentful for them, given all the work that they do and how much of it seemed to be so thankless. But it turns out that these women do not want my resentment on their behalf, but there is something I can offer them. I'm an organizer, I'm the president of a food research organization, and I can tell stories. And I know how important it is for us to value women in the food system and realize their contributions to food production all over the world. 
It doesn't matter how much local organic food we buy or how much money foundations pour into agricultural development unless we listen to what women farmers want and need and then work with them to find ways to provide it. Thank you. <laughs> So I want to take you back to the town I grew up in, uh, Defiance, Missouri, just for a few minutes. And you know, my parents were those people who moved to uh, the, the country from the big city so that they could raise their kids in the fresh air. And I honestly had this very idyllic childhood. You know, we had this very lush garden. I had a pony. Uh, my, you know, my mom canned anything and everything that would fit into a jar. And, and for so many people, Defiance at that time was the epitome uh, of the American dream. And, and I tend to have these very vague uh, memories of, of the men who ran the farms there. You know, they grew corn and soybeans, they raised hogs and cattle, but I have very clear images of their wives in my head still because it was the women farmers who also had amazing gardens. They were the ones who made the apple butter and the pies and, and the sausage for the church dinners. And when someone was sick or passed away, they're the ones who brought over food. And, and I vowed, honestly, never to be one of them and hightailed it out of there. And, and you know, but you know how that works, right? The further I went away from agriculture, the more the food system had to pull on me, and it still does. And I, I, you know, I started in my early 20s volunteering on farms and working at farmers markets. And when I was 22, I packed my very expensive North Face backpack and strapped on my Tevas and, and boarded a plane to be a Peace Corps volunteer in the Dominican Republic you know, to go teach farmers. And you know how that works for volunteers, right? We always end up learning more than we could ever teach anyone. And I am incredibly grateful to the farmers I met on the ground who, you know, helped me start connecting the dots between women's equality, the environment, agricultural production, economics, and social justice. And I realized at some point, you know, I wasn't going to be a farmer, but I could offer them something and, and really get their stories to a wider audience. And, and here's how I, how I continue to think of my role. I'm a pollinator. I, I like to uh, spread information and solutions that are working on the ground that farmers themselves are developing every day. And this role really hit home for me a few years ago when I was sitting in a circle with about 50 women farmers outside of Ahmedabad, India. And uh, they, they all knew that I had traveled a lot and talked to farmers all over the world. And after I finished interrogating them about their lives and their farming practices, because that's what I do, uh, they started asking me questions. And they wanted to know what farmers, uh, particularly women farmers in other parts of the world, and particularly sub-Saharan Africa, we're doing to combat things like drought, uh, conserve water, and protect biodiversity. And, and so I shared with them what I knew. And since then, I've been trying to share as many of these stories as possible and highlight what farmers are doing on the ground to alleviate hunger and poverty while also protecting the environment. And, and I'm going to share two examples with you. In Niger, I met with this amazing group uh, of women farmers who had started a communal garden. And they were growing vegetables and, and fruit and selling fruit trees. And, and they told me that before they had started the garden, uh, they were making about $300 per year. And obviously, that's less than a dollar per day. And, and when I met them, they were making $1,500 per year. So imagine what your life would be like if this time next year you were making about five times more than you are now. But it's, it's more than money that these women have gained. They've really innovated their way to a sustainable life. The next story I want to share, and listen, I could talk about women farmers all day long, but I, I won't given our time limits here. But I met with a group of women farmers in, in Ghana who uh, had started a small dairy cooperative to produce yogurt and other products to sell to local schools and, and stores in their community. And they told me that when they first started the, the cooperative, their husbands were really, really angry. They said, how dare you go behind our backs to, to start this cooperative? But once the men in the community saw how their family incomes grew, and they saw how the women used the money to, to buy school books for their children, to uh, pay for better health care, to buy more nutritious food, the more their anger turned to respect. And these women and thousands of others like them are changing the food system 
and making it more sustainable for all of us. And, and sustainability, I want you to know, is not a fad. It is not a catchphrase. For me, it's a, a food system that doesn't lurch from crisis to crisis, a, a, a food system that does not chew people up and spit them out. Sustainability is what happens when techniques for, for combating drought are shared with the people who need them, and sustainability is what happens when women who are making 90 cents per day are now making $5 a day by using agroecological practices and really building better lives for themselves and their families. I think that's a better definition of sustainability than what we typically hear. And, and the question for me now is, how do we go forward from here? And I wish I had a clear path, but I know that the way will be led by real conversations and real action with women farmers. We'll need to listen to what these women want and need, and again, work with them to provide it. And we'll need to listen to you, because in the big cycle of food, Many of us are producers, many of you are producers in this room, but all of us are eaters. As we make headway, I promise you we'll see progress in the fight for sustainability in the food system and women's equality, because as goes the fate of women, so goes the fate of the world. And that's one thing that I've seen over and over again in my work and my travels. And the data actually support this idea. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, if women had the same access to resources as male farmers, again, land, credit, extension services, education, they could raise yields by 20 to 30% and lift as many as 150 million people out of hunger. So get on board, celebrate, International Women's Day tomorrow, March 8th, and every day and every year by helping build greater awareness of women food producers from Brooklyn to Bangladesh and everywhere in between. And you can start by recognizing the work of the Korean Women's Peasants Association. A few years ago, they won the Food Sovereignty Prize for their work promoting the survival of small-scale farmers and really helping women farmers get the equality they need in the food system. You can join the Women, Food, and Agriculture Network, which links and empowers women farmers across the United States. You can recognize the work of La Via Campesina, one of the most impactful farmers organizations in the world with more than 200 million members, uniting peasants groups, the landless, and women's organizations. And you can recognize the important work of the Self-Employed Women's Association, one of the biggest unions in the world with more than one million members. Part of their work focuses on training women in organic food production and then helping them market their products to low-income women in urban areas, providing a source of safe, nutritious, and affordable food to people who otherwise would not have access to it. All of these organizations and, and hundreds of other individuals and farmers unions and farmers groups around the world are really great places to start to build equality in the food system. Because if we ignore women farmers, we ignore them at our own peril. Let's be smarter and give them the honor, recognition, and value they need to nourish both people and the planet. Thank you so much. <laughs>